Good morning, traders. Today is Wednesday, September 8th. My name is Charles, and this is the Pirate Traders live stream. All right. So yesterday, for those of you that were with me in the private stream, uh, you remembered at the end of the day, I talked about how pivotal it will be uh, to see what the overnight does tonight, uh, which was last night, obviously. Um, because the way that they trade will give us an indication as to what's happening on a bigger picture. So yesterday, if you guys will recall in the morning, I was pointing out that there were two potential scenarios looking at the daily here. One was that, that we were just balancing. We had a balancing area and that we just needed to head down, test the lower end of that balance. And if we found support, then rotate back up to the top with the potential to break out from there. The other scenario to consider was that the, the market had failed to break out on this trend line and we needed a larger pullback either to the 20 moving average or down here to the 50 moving average in order to find support for another push higher. Okay, which is what you can see happened. Whoops. It's what you can see happened here. Failed to break out, pulled back, failed to break out, pulled back failed to break out, pulled back, okay? So you can see that's a very common move for the market to do. It needs time to pull back and let uh, stronger hands, longer term players step in. And they love that 20 moving average on the daily and that 50 moving average on the daily, which also lines up nicely with the uh, lower trend line of our channel here. So now, because of what the overnight did last night, we're getting a clue that it is probably more likely that the market needs to roll over looking for stronger support, okay? So that leaves me coming into the day a little bit bearish, not overly bearish, um, but just a little bit, okay? Let's take a look at that overnight. Let's just stretch it out and take a look at what it traded, how it traded. So you can see they rotated inside, you know, pretty much our value area inside the range where we were rotating yesterday. And then as soon as that low broke, as soon as we broke down below um, the low of the day, it caused a massive sell off. But they did very quickly find support and rotate back up above this balancing area. So this morning, the key thing to watch is this balance area low. I mean, we're going to open like right on top of it. The balance area low is 45, 12, 50. So we're going to be opening right on top of that level. And so it's going to be very pivotal to see, does the market find support here and start to push higher? If not, what I will be watching for is when it pushes below, obviously we've got this gap that needs filling here. So once that gap fills, I expect the market will push back up and try to get into the balancing area again. If it seems like it's finding resistance and it's not quite able to get into that balancing area, that to me would be a very potent short for continuation down to that 20 daily moving average, okay? Which is currently sitting at about uh, 4483-ish, okay? So that's a big move down that we could potentially get if the market can't get back up into this balance area low, right? However, if we trade below this level, okay, we find support and we push back up above and then it doesn't seem like we need to pull back below it, Again, same as yesterday, that is a very potent long to rotate to the opposite end of balance on the upper side as a look below and fail of the balancing area. Uh, and that high would be 45, 44. Okay. So we don't necessarily have to get there today, but in the next few days we would get there. So this level right here, this balance area low will be very pivotal in my mind. Uh, but then I also keep in mind, we have a lot of weakness below. Uh, you know, we got another poor low down here at 65, 44, 65. So we got a lot of weakness below. So the potential is there for the market to have another day of selling today. So I'm going to stay acutely uh, aware of that possibility. Uh, also, obviously, keeping an eye on the internals to see what signals they're going to give us. But outside of that, there's not much to report here. So what would get me bullish would be if the market opens. We're going to open inside the previous day's range, so we're likely to get some chop. Uh, and if we open and we just immediately start trading higher, that would get me bullish. 
and the confirmation would be getting through this prominent POC and note of volume from the overnight. If we pushed up and we got through that, no problem, uh, that would be bullish to me as well. Or like I said, if we have a look below and fail, if we look below yesterday's low, pull back up, and then we end up back above that balance area low, those are the two bullish scenarios. The bearish scenario is pushing below and then finding resistance and continuing, okay? This is what happens when I start too early. I've got nothing to talk about now. Good morning, MK. Good to see you. Good morning, Rad. Martin, welcome. Good to see you. Our K. Leon back with us. Oh boy, I turn that volume down. Marco, good to see you. My friend from Belarus, good to see you. Sanjay, good morning. Literally opening right on that balancing area low. So I wouldn't necessarily look for chop now. The fact that we immediately traded below yesterday's range. I think the market is ready to move a new direction. So we've now repaired all this weekend weakness. We've filled that gap. So once again, from this point, we're looking, do they, are they unable to get above this balancing area low so far in that first push? That's right where they stopped. So that's the first signal. There's some resistance in here now. Sixty nine people watching, please smash that like button. Let's get some enthusiasm in the chat. All right, well we're getting more resistance, so this is bearish, guys. Again, it's about that longer term players looking for that pullback down to that twenty moving average on the daily. It's what happens over and over when we fail to break out. Uh, Nicholas asking, should I sell calls ending Friday? I mean, I think it's a little too early. Give the market a second here to try to push back into yesterday's range. Um, but if it continues to find resistance, I think we're going to sell off. But as far as where the market is two days from now, that's harder to guess. Because if we were to trade down to that 20 moving average today, you can see sometimes we bounce right off of it, boop, boop, and then start heading up again. Okay, so the internals are opening a little bearish, but they're still just absorbing that overnight move.
Ronald shorted 14 break even. Yeah, that's a great trade. If you're short the market, you could put your stop just above the high right here, and that'll be a great spot for the stop. Because if the market pushes back up into the balancing area, it could continue higher. But if it's going to find resistance and continue to push lower, it's likely to be in this area. Again, more resistance building. Jump over and take a look at the NQ real quick. Yeah, NQ nowhere near as bearish as the ES here. Same as the last few days, but we are trending lower. Actually, never mind. It just looks more like balance here. So again, look at yesterday's low as the potential go, no go level. If they push below yesterday's low and then they find resistance, you're going to get continuation to the downside. That low is at uh, 15607. All right, so here's where we want to see. Do we start to build up resistance right here? What's happening with the ticks? Do they stay stuck below the zero line or are they able to push up above? Okay, first round, some some resistance. Where's the support on the ES? That's a great question. Let's step back and look for some support. Obviously, like I said, my biggest thing is that 20 moving average on the daily. I think this becomes the target. Um, but of course, there's support along the way. Yeah, so first support is going to be really strong support is going to be the repair of this weak E period low at uh, 44.95. If they can get down there, repair that and bring in the support there. This is like a previous balancing area. So that's sort of the high of the previous balancing area. That would be bullish.
Okay, so it's not great taper on the low, but it's acceptable. We looked below that balancing area and we pulled back up above. So, so far it's a look below and fail. So now the next step is, can we build support around this same level? So market pushes higher, comes back down and then finds support for continuation. They are getting above the zero line on the tick, so there's more buyers than sellers stepping in here. So Charles, we look below and fail. Do I jump into a long trade? Should I be long right now? Nope, not yet. This could just be a little squeeze. A little squeezy squeeze. So let's wait for the support when we pull back down here around that opening price. This will be one of those days where having the patience to wait for the market to give you the signal will offer a very good trade because the market is likely to move one way or another. If we fail to get back up into the balancing area, we're likely to get a pretty big pullback. And if we do, we're likely to get a push higher today. So either way that this breaks, it offers a good opportunity moving forward. I highly doubt we just rotate in this range. Worth noting, value, which is the most important indicator that we have, has been trending down, overlapping to lower, overlapping to lower. Okay, tough read here. It's not quite the support I'm looking for. They're really struggling to get above the zero line and stay above it. The advancers versus decliners looks good, though.
All right, picking up where I left off. Good morning, Tom and Shubaho Deep. Good to see you guys. Arthur back with us. Good morning. Cy Worker is here. Hey. Amir is back with us. Good to see you. Ronald, good morning. Schick230, good morning to you. Jean Franco, good morning to you as well. Phoenix back with us. Hey, brother. And Fausto, good to see you. All right, is that support? Ooh, I still don't trust it. Those ticks are struggling. So at this point, the way I would trade it is I would be I'd be comfortable putting in some buy orders in here. So that if it pulls back down with a tight stop just below that uh, halfback. Wouldn't buy up here yet. I'd give it a chance to pull back down again and confirm that support. And also, as I mentioned this morning, pushing above this node here from the overnight. And then staying above that would be very bullish as well. But the ticks should confirm it. We should see a lot of buyers stepping in. Got some low volume nodes in here that need backfilling, 166 contracts, 210. Shubho deep looks like the uh, market's trying to wear those climbing shoes. I don't know. It's struggling. You know what I mean? I'm always asking myself the question, what is the market doing and how good of a job is it doing of it? Right? If what it's trying to do is just balance off right here so that it can rotate up to the opposite and balance and then break out, it's not doing a very good job of it. So that is suspect to me. Well, what do you mean, Charles? Not doing a very good job. Well, we did the work yesterday. We looked below the balancing area and we pulled above and we stayed above for the rest of the day. So we set up the overnight to go ahead and either rotate up inside the balancing area or to push higher. But they did not. They did the opposite of that. So... The market's not doing a very good job if that's the goal. Uh, Nav Trader, do we have a gap down? No, we did not. We opened inside the previous day's range. Fausto feels trappy. Yeah, I mean, let's see what happens when they pull back down. When they backfill this here, and we get back to this note of volume right here, around 13, let's see what happens there. But the ticks are struggling to get up.
So again, just in terms of risk reward, I'd be fine buying this here with a stop down here, just because you're taking very little risk on a long trade. And if we're going to find support, it should be in here. All right, you guys are getting short. You think it's going to fail. Nothing wrong with getting short here. I would personally wait until we got below this node and go short there. Just because the market hasn't told us yet whether it's going to bring in support here. But as long as you got a nice tight stop, you're good. Ticks failing. <laughs> Donkey. <laughs> Everybody saying they're going short is your signal to go long. Uh, I don't know, man. Them ticks. Them ticks can't get above the zero line. There are more sellers in this market, right? At least right now. And we're just right on this pivotal area. It's anyone's ball game. Here we go. The chat's getting fired up. Some people are long. Some people are short. Apparently nobody can wait until they get a better signal. <laughs> Just too anxious. Our K Leon's going long short here. Uh, long one ES, short 10 MES. <laughs> That's something I tried, by the way, once back in the day. It was one strategy I tried. Like when you're at a pivotal point like this, like just go long one ES, short 10 e MES, and then wait for it to play out. And like as soon as it starts to trade lower, just close out your long trade and then ride the short trade. It does not work. I do not recommend it. It totally fucks with your psychology.
River Rock, they should at least test uh, 4503. Um, no, I, I put much more weight on the balancing area low. If they can hold it up here, then they don't need to go any lower. And if it breaks, they're like I said, they're probably looking at much deeper targets. But one step at a time. Let's see if they can hold this first. There they go. They're starting to step in here. The support is working. NQ looks like it needs more selling, though. Oh, yeah, they're right on the bottom edge. Yeah, like I said, look for support at yesterday's low. If that holds, it'll turn around and rotate back up. Okay, so if you did step into that trade down here, where I mentioned before with your stop below here, you should still be in it. I would go ahead and move my stop to a tick above break even here. You can always step back in if you get stopped out, but uh, the market should start to bring in more buyers and push higher here. Harry, where is the target ES long? Uh, well, again, it depends what kind of trader you are. You know, if you're a super short-term trader, you could take profits in this note of volume up here around 19, uh, in this one up here around 25. Uh, but if, you're, if you can hold it a bit longer, like I said, the way balance areas work, when you look below, I hate when it does that. You know, this is the balancing area here. Oops. Not a very straight line on the high, but you get the idea. When you look below and fail, you almost always rotate to the opposite end. 
It doesn't necessarily happen that day, like instantly, but you'd be surprised. A couple of days later, you find yourself up here. So there's, you could take profits in here, you could take profits in here, or you could hold for that longer move up to the opposite end. Tale of two markets here. ES is bringing in buyers and the NQ is failing. All right, one time framing higher has me feeling bullish. B -b 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 bullish. We had a look below and fail, brought in support. We got ticks trending higher above the zero line and we're now one time framing higher. We also pulled the value area so that it is now only overlapping to lower instead of being completely lower. So all of this is bullish. Now, just like the second half of yesterday, what I was saying, what you watch for in this trend is like, it'll push higher and then it'll pull back down. Does it start to build support and bring in volume? If so, it'll push higher again, pull back down. Does it bring in volume? And you just kind of watch how far it can trend. So now if you got into that long down there, moved your stop to a tick above break even, you can just sit back and wait and let the one time framing tell you how far this market's going to push higher. Just one way to look at it. For those of you that don't know what one time framing means, it means that each 30 minute time period, so each letter here on the chart, which, which is basically like a candlestick that represents a 30 minute time period, the low of each time period stays above the previous low. As long as it keeps doing that, the market will tend to just keep going. Okay, so this right here, seeing this in the ticks, the giant wick to the upside, lets us know that probably this push right here was a lot more short covering than new money buying. So now these buyers need to step in. So we need to push those ticks back above.
I got so used to looking at these ticks bigger in the uh, trading view chart. Now I'm switching it back so I can see them better. Okay, well, they're not doing it. They're not bringing in the buyers here. Donkey, think we've all been successfully conditioned to expect the V-shaped bottom. I would agree with that. We've also been conditioned, though, to watch the first two time frames trend one direction and then turn around and flip the other, both to the downside and the upside. So I'm never convinced of anything till the C period. Roscoe, Vix is climbing. The good old Vix. Marco says, what's really meaningful to me is the rally week high on prior day. I don't think we had a week high. Are oh, you just mean these, these week highs? Yeah, that was the push higher. Created some weakness there. Implying that this is just short-term traders, weaker hand sellers that push us back down. It's certainly a target to the upside, but I'm not looking at that too hard. Much more focused now on the trend, right? Like I said, do they keep pushing higher and then pulling back down and then bringing in volume and then pushing higher and pulling back down and bringing in volume? That's the focus at this point. Cyworker, thanks for bringing emotions down. Yeah, I sure hope so. I used to trade frantic first thing in the morning. It's no way to live. Kick back, make yourself a cup of coffee, and <clears throat> watch what the market does. If you're in the trade from this morning, you're still sitting pretty. You got your stop above your entry, and you're just watching that one time framing. Like watching a TV show. Let's just see what the market does. No reason to be stressed. Fausto still flat. What would it take to get you bullish on the market, Fausto, enough to enter? You want to see another pullback down into this area to find support? G 
you want to see the ticks stay above the zero line? I uh, thought so. <clears throat> I mean, they can go up, but as you can see, they're struggling to get the numbers. I don't see it as struggling. I see it as building volume. You know, the ticks are sitting right on that zero line. So it's not like there's a ton of uh, positive momentum pushing the market higher here. But there are more buyers than sellers. And they're they're struggling in an area that's been resistance. So often once you get through resistance, it becomes support. Of course, as soon as I say that, <laughs> I get that red tick. Yeah, I'm not really focused on spy. I think the futures lead spy, not vice versa.
would I say that 1475 is a pivot? Um, I don't know. It's tricky to say here. I mean, that's where the note of volume is, obviously. Right up in here. Oh, you're saying 1475. Oh, to the downside. No, it's just regular support resistance here. So this push was obviously short covering, right? Boop, was short covering. So now that we've pulled back down, buyers need new buyers. People who are flat right now need to choose to start buying here. We'll know that that's what they're doing if they can get the ticks above the zero line. So until the decision's been made here, I think it's still just a gamble. But like I said, if you got your good entry down here, you can't lose money. And of course, pulling back down below the opening price, below that balance area low, would be very bearish. Uh, Lamus, could it be an all-day ranging day? I don't think so. Of course, anything's possible, but it's we're at such a pivotal level. Again, just step back for perspective and take a look at those daily candles. You know, we're just at such a precarious position. I feel like the market needs to make a decision here and then start to either move down to that 20 moving average or work its way back up to the opposite end of balance. I feel like one way or the other, we've got a move to do today. But I've been wrong before. Uh, right now, the 20 daily is sitting at about And we got some support in there. Not super strong, but it's there. But first things first, can they hold the look below and fail? You can do it. <laughs> nope. Come on, buyers, where are you at? No enthusiasm this morning. One hundred viewers, man! It's been a minute since we got above a hundred. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I appreciate you. 
please smush, 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 smash that like button or gently touch it. Just the thumbs up or the thumbs down. If you hate me, go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Miles. Yeah, I would say buyers are a little fearful here. They've they've got plenty of opportunity to step in and start pushing this market, and they're just not doing it. So the more time we spend stuck under this note of volume, the more and more bearish it feels. We really need to push back up above and then come back down and start to build some support in here. River Rock, they should have a neutral button. I think just not pushing a button is neutral. Uh, they should have a we kind of like it button. Uh. So, Donkey, if the balancing area is 17.5, you're short the market, right? Because we, we are stuck below it. All right, well, the internals are starting to give us a signal, bearishness. Desperately struggling to get above that zero line, can't pull it off. Pulling back below this balance area low. Very bearish. There she goes. Well, I would switch this to bearish, but I'm just going to switch it to bouncing soon. RK, thank you for the five dollars, brother. Appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, join the brigade, guys. Cost ten bucks a month. I can almost certainly guarantee you in the period of a month I will say at least one thing that will either save you ten dollars in a losing trade or make you ten dollars in a winning trade.
Donkey, alluding that he would go long when the C period prints if it stays above that B period low. It's just a matter of probabilities. If you take the trade every time and you win more than you lose, it's a great trade. But man, getting bearish. Getting ba 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 bearish. Those buyers are drying up. Fausto, thank you, brother. This market needs to dump more. Well, it's certainly starting to look like it. More and more sellers are piling on. So again, if you wanted to go short here, for the break below the balancing area low. You can put your stop just like 45, 14, 50. You got the half back to act as resistance and also this note of volume here. Man, look at the NQ. They're selling the tech. Still kind of just looks rotational. Keeping an eye on yesterday's low. Martin, welcome, brother. We'll see you in a few in the brigade. Donkey, do you track your trades? Do you know statistically how often that one time framing trade works out? It'd be great to be able to analyze it based on like how many points you come, like anytime it comes within a few ticks and you take it, how often, per, you know, over time it works out. Just pulled the POC lower. That is a little bit bearish. So one time framing refers to the C period low um, staying. It can go one tick below the B period, but if it goes two ticks below, that's the cessation of one time framing. That's the end. So as long as that C period low stays either at the B period low or goes one tick below it, the market is still trending higher. Okay. And so what donkey is talking about is you go long right here. And then you can just put your stop two ticks below right there. So you're risking nothing. You know what I mean? You're risking 25 bucks on a single contract um, with the potential for the market to keep trading higher the rest of the day. Now, to me, it's not a great trade today because of this balance area low and the ticks, the internals looking bearish. But it's one of those trades where if you take it every single time it presents itself, statistically it probably works out in your favor more than you lose and when you lose again you're only losing a couple of ticks so it's not a huge loss 
Whereas when you gain, the market can often keep going and going and going. So very little risk for, for high potential reward. Yep, that is the cessation of one time framing there. So increasing the odds the market is going to go rotational. But exactly the same as I said yesterday, I'm not looking to go long in here. I'm looking for a bigger pullback and then we find support somewhere further down in the chart just because that balancing area failed. Okay. So if what the market was trying to do was to balance in here, it's doing a terrible job. It failed. So it's going to have to go to the next spot where it finds support. All right, guys. Well, with that, I will bid you farewell. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Enjoy the market. And uh, I will see you all here tomorrow morning. If you're a member of the brigade, I haven't got the email thing up and running just yet. So uh, give me about 10 minutes, then go log into the website and uh, click that green button to join the stream. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.